Hi folks, Brandon Villarola with The Register, and I'm here today with Benny Gill, founder and CEO of automation or AI automation firm Cognitos, to talk about why he believes that the push for automated general intelligence, or AGI, is the wrong approach. Benny, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Brandon, for having me. Right, so getting right into it, you said that you think that OpenAI is taking the wrong tack by constantly pushing uh, for AGI. So. Um, do you actually think that AGI is possible, or is this something that's more of a pipe dream at this point? Artificial general intelligence AGI, I do think it's possible. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think the reason that the uh, we we believe that AGI is needed is it is, is going to be super powerful. Um, I believe that we need to learn from the industrial age a bit and see mm -hmm. how we had offloaded manual labor and then take those learnings and figure out how we can offload mental labor, right? So when we're talking about that, <clears throat> we can build a lot more powerful systems than what AGI can build. And, right. and if you're looking for a more productive future, I think instead of AGI, we should be doing something which I like to call artificial narrow intelligence, ANI. And that I think would be a lot more powerful. Uh, just getting right into it, uh, let me explain uh, through analogies here, right? Sure. In the industrial age, we wanted to offload manual labor. We used to take uh, picks and shovels and um, you know dig into the soil and all of that. We created a whole plethora of different looking machines, mm -hmm. right? And they were not mimics of human you know, arms and legs. Cars don't have legs, elevators don't have arms to climb up ropes. They look right. very different from humans. Now, why did we do that? Why not just mimic something that is just like a human, all the flexibility that a human has? A couple of reasons. <clears throat> One, it's in general hard. Two, if you want to make it powerful, then you have to think about a lot more things if it is general. So I have um, a theorem, uh, which I'll share here. I haven't really formally published it, but uh, in the computer science world, there's a theorem called CAP theorem. You know, you have to pick two among three things. In, in real life, there are a lot of these kind of things. In the world of AI, I have something called GPS theorem, okay? Mm -hmm. Generality, AGI is general, okay? Mm -hmm. Power, right. safety. I posit you can only pick two of these. So now let's uh, think, think through that. Kind of so, like the old fashioned, uh, you know, choose speed, quality, or uh, or, you know, what was the third one? Speed quality, quality or? Quantity. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yep. Exactly, and you know, so if you pick generality, now you're left with power and safety, you have to pick one of them. So if you pick power, general and power won't be safe. And that would be AI machines that are used as weapons. And the right. government will create those things. But as OpenAI, you would probably say, okay, I wanna make, make it general and I wanna make it safe. Okay, for people then you will be giving up on power. And that's my point. You will be forced to give up power. Now, learning from the industrial age, the most powerful machine that we have around us is actually a freight train that goes on two rails. You know, imagine the amount of momentum that has. If it was fully flexible and it could stomp around Manhattan, it could destroy all sorts of buildings, but, <laughs> but it is not general. It is just, right. so there are guardrails and it's only going there. The driver could be sleeping and yet the amount of damage is very limited. In the world of AI, we've had super human AI, like the chess playing um, AI machine or mm -hmm. the playing mm -hmm. AI machine. It is hardly general. The only thing it can do is move pawns on a, um, on a chess board. However, if it was general, then it would say, okay, I'm playing chess. I want to beat the other guy, but I also have access to the internet. I know how to hack into the Pentagon, whatever. Let me just do that and actually kill the opponent in the real world. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now you get worried and you say, okay, no, how to make it safe? So there's this tussle between, um, look at the real world here. Cars have certain guidelines and all of that. Airplanes, more general machines, they fly in 3D. Mm -hmm. That's where you go into security check in every day, right? And so that's what we have learned from the industrial age, bringing it to the world of AI when we are offloading mental labor we have to think about the same things. I believe just like you see a plethora of machines around you, all looking different, solving specific needs, all of them far more powerful than a single human. That's what we need to do with AI, artificial narrow intelligence. But just like in the industrial age, all the machines had 
human control. I have a steering wheel. I have a co you know a pilot's um, cockpit. Uh, elevator has buttons to control. Give the control to humans. And therefore, the AI could still suggest what you want to do, but the human is all in control. That's the way right. forward. See, that makes me think a lot of, and one of the things that I was writing down when I was thinking about, you know, your conception of AI versus, you know, the AGI conception is it makes me think of, you know, the ship computer on Star Trek, right? This thing is capable of doing so much, right? You can ask it to collate two pieces of unrelated information, contrast them, compare them. I mean, obviously, some of that's within the scope of the show in science fiction, right? But it's this incredibly powerful AI that it doesn't do anything on its own, right? It is only there to to serve the needs of people, right? So they're yeah. still, you know, when you're engineering and you need it to address some problem right away, you can tell it what you want it to do and it'll do it, right? But it's still kind of narrowly tailored. So I'm assuming, but I'm assuming you don't see something kind of like a general, you know, a system, like there's there's no idea here of one big AI product that would be able to do all these things kind of inside it, right? Like a super That's machine. Insane. I'm saying it is possible. You you can create something, but then the safety questions around it would be increasingly hard to solve. Um, right. And, and that would be, and so it's definitely possible. AI, AGI is within our reach. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that is, as a society will go towards is, okay, now we have superhuman intelligence and it's general like humans and probably beyond humans. How do you make it safe? Right. Then people will say, oh, you know what? Let us align it with humans. So it needs to think like humans, be like a human. That's the, and I, that is a very slippery slope. Uh, yeah. and, and I think even that is highly possible to do. But the reason it is slippery is because if you look at humans, the biggest threat to humanity is humans. Uh, the largest number of people who are killed because of, you know, outside of natural causes is humans killing other humans in wars and all of that, mm -hmm. right? Even brothers turn against uh, each other and then but humans don't actually go to war with animals. They don't go go to war with lower intelligence species out there, right? Uh, we actually try to protect them and all of that. So whenever there is a case of having equal intelligence or even higher, there's a whole bunch of insecurity that humans have. Now, if you build something that mimics humans, that something will also have similar concerns. Right. And, and that is something very hard for uh, for us to control humans have taken millennia of creating civilization society rules of law and then justice system so that's why humans talking to other humans on the street feel safe because it's not wild wild west kind of situation but you take the same human and say hey there here is a vr game and you're playing fortnite put on this thing and what do they do take a gun and shoot other humans and <laughs> feel happy about it so that's the right. core like in the inside of the human brain we are like lions or tigers or cats. Like we like to just have fun with even destruction and nothing wrong with that because that's the evolutionarily, that's what we have had in order to survive and succeed. Now, therefore aligning a machine to exactly think like a human, even though it might be possible, I think it's uh, also a bunch of questions uh, to be asked there. Instead, I'm saying, don't fool ourselves to assume that the machine will be aligned. Mm -hmm. Assume it's a Martian. Right, like the Mars Attacks movie. Assume they're Martians. How would you use their super intelligence? Okay, put them in a bubble like a minority report, like super intelligence in a bubble. Mm -hmm. And add that AI system being highly general and intelligent can only advise. Say, okay, this is what I think you should do. And you should say, yeah, but as a human, I don't like that. Right. And then you say, you strike it off. Give me another option, another option. You know what we do it today? Uh, with doctors, I go to the doctor and doctor to me is superhuman intelligence in terms of diagnosis. I have no idea how the doctor knows so much or figures it out. But the doctor doesn't just cut me open and fix me. Doctor says, let me explain to you. And here is my plan for you. And this is your choice. I want you mm -hmm. to go through the surgery tomorrow. Now, I being human and, you know, to be human, only humans are human. We'll say, no, tomorrow is my you know, son's birthday. I don't want to go there. The doctor is saying, no, it's logical that you do it. The probability of success and all that. And I said, no, it's my decision. Right. So the AI needs to be doing the same thing. But now yeah. but you're seeing, so, uh, you know, these are all um, the, the ANI, the artificial narrow intelligence models. They would all be separate little things that are doing their own little tasks, right? Sort of compartmentalized uh, 
AI bots that are trained to do one particular thing. Like I always like to use the example of like a, a, a bot trained to pull case files for legal cases, right? Obviously oh, okay. we've had some bad examples, right? Of that recently in the press where AI <laughs> has made up case law, right? But yeah. uh, so we, once we get past that hallucination point, right? We may be able to have a bot that can just do this, right? Just do that or these kind of, so that's kind of the idea you have is these small, um, specially trained units. Well, that's, yeah, that's the current view, but I think mm -hmm. going forward, the same view, but at a, a bit higher level is like, just like humans are specialized to do certain things, like everybody has high school education. So the, today, right. GPT-4 to me is like a high school education level. That's the baseline. Everybody needs to have it. But when you're training these AI models, instead of training them to be human or be mm -hmm. general, you train them to be a great physicist or a great lawyer or a great doctor. And then the way you say, you know, uh, give them scores is, did they save the patient's life if it was a doctor? Mm -hmm. Or if it's a lawyer, did they win the case? A very narrow, just like a chess playing AI, did you win the game? Okay. Right. You cannot okay. say, oh, by the way, you have to save the patient, but also you don't need to have biases. And also you, sh you need to be fair, you know, on the, you know, on the social disparity and all of that. There's a lot of other things. Leave that to the human to actually mm -hmm. make the judgment call. So now I'm talking to a bunch of specialists and experts. Okay. Now, for example, the classic example, like back to the future, the doctor, their doc is extremely good at physics, but you don't mm -hmm. expect that doc to do other things normal in life. Right. Right. Uh, not <laughs> definitely some... not, especially as the movie proved, right. He was a bit of a yeah, case. <laughs> definitely not. But that's okay. So imagine mm -hmm. the future is about the human beings are in control. And then you have these specialists who could be Einstein's sitting or somebody, but they can advise and guide you and try to push you in the direction. But you say, no, no, I'm making the decision and I'll do that. I'll give you another analogy. Even in fiction, we do it all the time. Iron Man mm -hmm. created the Iron Man suit, which is the most powerful mechanical device. And then Jarvis, most powerful AI engine. Mm -hmm. He could have just given a prompt, save humanity, and then sat back and let Jarvis and Iron Man suit do the thing. But the, as the movie also shows, it takes a human to decide eventually what is right and what is wrong. And you needed the Iron Man inside the suit. Right. That is the future of how to deal with superhuman anything. The, uh, the human is in the suit and humans like other humans making decisions, not AI. And that's what I'm trying to push for is Let's build a future where anything that the AI is going to do, it has to explain to a human and the human has the final uh, call. Already in, in, in the outside world, you see Tesla says mm -hmm. human has the final call. You are on the driver's seat, right? Um, in the world of programming or business process automation, we are saying, yes, not the developer. There are very few developers in the world, but the billions of people who understand natural language, they need to be in the driver's seat. AI could do all sorts of co-pilot programming but before it's actually run, it's in English. Everybody should be able to see it and say, okay, this is what's going to happen. That is sort of our you know, bastion against um, AI taking over the world kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it also gives us the ability of dealing with machines that are far more powerful than humans because the button or the steering wheel is in the hand of a human. Like a car is more powerful than 100 humans. Yet there are 1.5 billion of these in the world. How come? Because a human is there and we trust the human. Do accidents not happen? Oh, they happen every day. People die. But humans have evolved in a society where we say, yes, to us is human. Another person made a mistake. We will get justice served. With AI, there's no putting an AI into jail, right? So, right. Yeah, right. so they need to be not making the decisions, but just guiding and giving us some, some ideas of what we can do. Well, wow, Benny, this has been a, a very interesting talk. And the idea of artificial narrow intelligence is one that I definitely could see becoming, you know, uh, uh, a more a more a standard method going forward. So thanks so much for joining me uh, to have this quick chat today. Cool. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And you can read more about AI, whether we go in the AGI or ANI direction on the register.